say, say something about um, these patterns? Because I the, the first thing I noticed about this, because we use manipulatives a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the, what page the you pattern, on well, this is the, it's the page that has the, uh, the, the patterns up to five. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's kind I'm of what we just... I'm these very visual children is seeing the manipulatives in a pattern. Yes. Um, Don't we have till 3.30? Yeah. She was yelling out the tape. Oh, 37. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were like this one. Oh, but you, 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 we, you didn't want to, we were going to take a break, right? Yeah. When was I that? You, like, you decide. Time. It was 15 yeah, we minutes ago. Yeah, but we were in the middle of, yeah, so we can okay. take a break whenever you want. Okay. But um, I just, I, I, I think that would be helpful to talk about because my, my hunch yeah. is, is that some children really benefit from seeing their manipulatives in a Again, pattern. Again, back to the learning style, it's this, yeah. this group sees in patterns. They retain things in patterns. I've had guys that high-functioning autism, dyslexia, and possibly some other auditory processing things. I'm not even sure what the diagnoses were. Okay, months trying to memorize times tables. Okay, he came in. I said, um, pattern, pattern recognition, right, right brain. I said, um, do you know Mary had a little lamb? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. I said, okay. I wrote up on the board. Try this. Seven, fourteen, twenty-one, twenty-eight, thirty-five, forty-two, and forty-nine, fifty-six, and sixty-three. We went over it two or three times. He went home, went about his business, came back next week. His sevens were memorized. My uh, very visual youngest daughter, who was never terribly strong in math, came home one day and said, guess what I found out? I said, what? And she said, I was looking at the telephone, and mm. I realized that the digits, she didn't say digits, but the numbers on the telephone dial, on the, on the touch tone, were like the sevens tables which means that the way that they are ordered, if you look at them probably horizontally, I'm guessing, maybe vertically, goes from seven to four to one to eight. And she noticed that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she discovered that on just sort of that's like... A, that's totally she right was, brain. She that is so kind of, cool. She just kind of spaced <laughs> it out. You guys get it? No. You get it? No. No. Yeah. So you have brains on the ground. Watch this, watch this, watch this. 7, 14, oops, wait a minute, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, oh my God, 30, 42, it's visual. and 49, 56, and 63. But you got to remember, this group, there is no up, down, back, there's no, <laughs> that blows my mind. This one time with Ali, we're like, no, that is wrong. Awesome. <laughs> She's a very late so reader. She struggled with math. She, she mastered them both eventually, but it took her a while. And that was something that was great. That is awesome. <laughs> is, is that amazing? That's classic. That's the kind of thing that you'll see from these guys. They'll see stuff like that that no one else will. I love it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Ready for a break? Yeah, let's take a break. Let's take a break. <laughs> <laughs> so what can I ask you? Um, what do you know about not um, dyslexia but binocular vision?
think we're all happy. Oh, why they don't <laughs> Kids, 
Amazing. How's it writing? You can build them, shred them, shred them, squeeze them, So here's what you know. Here's what you know. If I don't do it right away, you know, I have nothing. But I've got all the stuff. Unfortunately, you won't be able to get to the beach a lot of our peers. And it's just a little bit of a No, they don't. I was talking a little bit about TV. Usually, the parent, public school parents, are the ones that need to know that you guys, you guys know this. Um, this is just happens to be a book that I picked up. Um, in fact, it was actually um, owned by Nancy Poor. I don't know if anybody knows Nancy. Um, um, on the, the, let's say, say it, the evils of media. Um, and for any kid, they can be a problem if taken to excess. For this group, it's like cocaine okay <laughs> tv computer video games i mean it is like oh yeah it's like your home <laughs> like you've gone to heaven um but you know too much and um and it, it just you know it's not gonna it's you can't pay attention you can't compete with that you can't compete with halo 3. there's just no way um and as much as i love to take credit for what i do I would, I would probably have to confess that there are results that I've gotten from kids, and I swear half the result was from getting them to turn off the TV set. <laughs> They're like, wow, he's so much better in class. Yeah, he turned off the TV set. You know, it was like two weeks without TV, and he could actually focus again. <laughs> so, yes. So, yeah, so just to, um, so you would say, as somebody who sees these kids, that the incidents... Mm -hmm. of th these kinds of problems is on the rise, these kinds yes, of challenge, you know, learning challenges, see, and, and maybe... Yes, I do. Do you see that? I do. I do see it, absolutely. Um, in fact, it's not, even, it's not even more, it's younger. Three years ago, almost my entire clientele was nine years old and above. Now, almost half the kids that walk through my door are seven and eight. They're, they're just hitting that wall so much earlier. Do you think that's partly because they're being asked to do this kind in, in regular schools, not Waldorf schools, but in the, your regular kindergarten where they're being actually asked to do the kind of schoolwork that we didn't used to it's, ask Yeah, it's way, to do? you know, we're asking kids to do, you know, essentially, out. I, I had a second grader come in 
And, and he, he had, this, was the, this was the problem. It said, um, Jennifer's mom is canning peaches. If she, if she canned three cans of peaches and she canned six more cans of peaches and she cans 45 peaches, how many peaches in each can? What? What grade? This was second grade. Um, this was second grade. And I went, now I'm a math guy, right? So, so here's what I'm seeing. You know, x equals, right, 3 plus 6, y equals uh, 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 40, yeah, 40, what is it, 40, yeah, 45 over x. It's like, now so, I saw that. Now, the, what they are supposed to do is this little trial and error thing, and they call that math. But it's not math. That's deductive reasoning, it's logical thinking. There's like so many cognitive skills built into that problem, I can't even shake a stick at them all. Mm -hmm. And that's really indicative of, of what I see, uh, the demands that we're putting on kids. And, you know, I mean, <coughs> I mean you, well, you, got, you know better than I do. Up until nine years old, we're living in the world of imagination, Santa Claus, fairies, gnomes, right? And here we are doing, you know, what I think is like fifth grade algebra. And it, and it goes on and on and on. Anyway. Um, so are you plugging Waldorf every time someone comes through your doors? <laughs> I do, I do. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't plug it as a panacea, because obviously my kids went to Waldorf and they hit the wall in fourth grade. They, need, they had to get help. Um, but did they do much better at Waldorf with you know, the broader based approach and, and the age appropriate learning and all kinds of other stuff. Oh yeah. I didn't want to think about what my life would have been like and with you know my kids in just plain public school, even though this is kind of a mix. Interesting. <laughs> the joining of two worlds. Um, so um, so any questions on what we've kind of looked at so far? No? It's all good? Just a question of, so for teachers who want to learn more about this after today, do you have resources? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. And, and we, we have, we, every month we have a, like a parent-teacher parent support group, parents, parent support meeting every uh, second Wednesday of the month. Um, and we've got a variety of programs um, all the way up to our basically our what we call our learning specialist certification and that's like it's about a month-long program and um, yeah you just you can learn everything 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 I know you will know <laughs> pretty much uh, it takes about you know, most people take about a month to go through it yeah that's I'm pretty shallow <laughs> month you'll learn everything you'll know everything I know um, and, 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 it's, and it's cool because uh, um, right now we have, we just started offering this last year, just kind of get, getting it up on the board as I felt confident in my ability to transfer the information so that people could be successful. And I've got guys now in the United Kingdom, Spain, um, and last night I was on a, I was on a call to my, my uh, uh, specialist in Japan who teaches English as a second language to Japanese students. So he's going to take this and incorporate it into what he does with his students to help them learn English more effectively. Um, what I had right before the... Handwriting. Handwriting. Okay, so somebody asked me, anybody have handwriting struggles? Okay. So here's the way a normal left-brainer kind of writes writes a word. So they write, you know, G O O D. Now here's how the right brainer writes it. <laughs> I had one kid, he could snap a number two pencil in his hands. He was that tense when he wrote. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, this is a very different process. Very different process. This is writing. You write the letters. So this group, they have the letter connect, a picture of the letter connected to the sound in their brain. 
and they just copy the letter out. And they write it. They just write the letter. What this group does, they don't have the map of the letter. It's not, it's not there for them. So what they have to do is draw, draw each letter as if they're drawing a flower or, you know, a bug or something. It's, I mean, literally, every letter is like, you know, T. And that's why you see them, you watch them look at the board, right? They're like this. They have to look at the board five times to just draw, to, to write one word. So, anyway, again, so what we, we have a couple of, depending upon the severity of the struggle, um, Well, here's a, here's a really here's a simple exercise we use. Um, it doesn't work on everyone, but it, but it can on on like non-severe struggles. It's as simple as this. I I I give them a piece of paper that have all the, the alphabet on it, okay? And then I give them a highlighter, okay? Now remember, I'm dealing with this group over here. I do not give them a pen or a pencil because what I don't want is them to start tracing the letters. Boy, that puts a good picture in my brain, mm -hmm. right? So I don't want that. What I do want to do is say, here's the letter, and then I give them a highlighter, like a, let's say a pink or orange or something like that. And I give them the highlighter, and I say, now, three times, trace the letter with your eyes open. Watch what you're doing. And they go, G, G, G. And then three times with your eyes closed. Now, in order to do it with their eyes closed, what do they have to do? Visualize. They have to visualize it. Yeah. So now they go, G, G, G. And, and it, for a lot of kids, it, does, it, it may not even take much more than that to get them to where they're, they're writing the letters now. They just write it. Write it. In fact, we will do some exercises where I have them take a piece of paper and I write something on the board and then they just copy it off the board without looking at their paper. And just, just to practice, because they have to see it and translate that picture, and it, and it gets it out of the <laughs> domain of drawing it to just writing it from, from that mental image. Is that what uh, like Temple Grandin meant by thinking in pictures in the way that she... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she got me thinking about a lot of stuff that yeah. some of it I hadn't thought about in, in, a, in a fair number of years. Like when I used to walk through a space like, like this space, and I can, turn, I can still turn it on anytime I want. I can see, remember, remember everybody read about Steiner in 90 degree angles? Okay? Okay, I can see every corner in this place. I can see where every wall ends. And as I walk through the space, you wouldn't even know it, but as I step, I will step like where these two legs line up, I'll step to avoid them because I don't want to step on that imaginary line. And then I'll step here so that I don't, I don't cross this line here, and I'll step between your two desks here, and I'll work, I can work my way around this whole room not stepping on any of these lines here. I won't step between those legs. I mean, on those legs, I'll step between them. And I can see all, I see the lines coming from here. Yeah. So every 90 degree angle creates one, an imaginary plane for me. And that's, I'm, I know that's what she sees. And they did, I thought they did a really good job in the movie of showing yeah. it, where she sees the gate, oh, and you can wow. see, yeah. you can see, you can do all that. So, what movie are you talking about? Temple Grandin. Yeah. There's a book, Thinking in Pictures, and then yeah. Any Anyone who has a child on spectrum, they have to read that book. Absolutely, it's a must read. Because it really starts to get you inside inside their head. You'll be encouraged to know that I read that in my um, liberal arts foundation course recently. Awesome. I'm going to, you know, toward my credential. And that was part of that course. Temple Grandin. Temple Grandin, Temple Grandin. yes. Grandin. Thinking in Pictures, My Life with Autism. And, and there's a movie about it, too, which is pretty cool. It was very cool. She's also written a really good book called Animals in Translation. Right. Which is about how she understands found because of who she is. And 
for for folks that have may think their kids are, or already know the kids are ADD, I do not like um, driven to distraction. Uh -huh. I think it's out.